All right. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. So uh, today's session will look at the challenges of putting your work out there and sharing it with, your, with the public. And we will talk about the challenges of having social media, uh, a social media presence that may uh, or may not over or under expose your practice as an artist. We will also talk about the taboos and the stigmas around commercialism when it comes to artwork. Um, as well as what it means to collaborate with luxury brands um, and how to see these instead as opportunities that can help support and, and, and grow your career as an artist. Um, I would just like to remind everyone um, that you are more than welcome to send in your comments and questions through the chat box or the Q&A section. So today we have Safian with us, who is an artist and a cultural uh, entrepreneur living and working in Dubai. He's also known as the Confused Arab on uh, social media and also as the founder of Karta, which is a cultural marketing agency based in the UAE. But I'm gonna let uh, Safian introduce himself further. Safian, please go ahead. Good evening, guys. Uh, very happy to, to be presenting uh, this session today. Very happy for two reasons, um, because I love social media and um, also I have a double cap, like a double hat, sorry. Um, as uh, Hessa told you, I'm an artist, practicing artist, and at the same time, cultural entrepreneur. And uh, due to my background, yes, I've been, uh, let's say on several sides of, of the table. So um, today we'll be uh, quickly talking about what is marketing, uh, what is the taboo that we, may, um, that we may face when it comes to art, marketing, social media. What is cultural marketing very quickly? Uh, we'll see uh, the necessity of creating a content strategy. Uh, we'll go through uh, key social media platforms and we'll have a focus on how to communicate on Instagram. And we'll finish on discussing, I think, one of the most important themes, which is how to uh, fairly collaborate um, when you're an artist with uh, brands or institutions. So very quickly, um, just for you to know exactly what I've been doing before, uh, I have uh, 13 year experience in marketing, brand management, uh, in cosmetic uh, and luxury. Uh, I've been also uh, working on arts and culture. Um, I'm French Algerian, as some might know. So, I mean, my career was between uh, Paris and Dubai, working for uh, big companies as uh, L'Oréal and LVMH. LVMH. And uh, starting 2016, um, I started Creative Ventures. So uh, the platform Confused Arab that you, I think some of you might know, might know uh, which is a digital and artistic platform on the uh, Middle East and North Africa region. It's also a website and um, it, it inspired me actually uh, to create art installation, which were shown in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Jeddah, Beirut, and London. And since 2017, uh, I've been joining the two universes. So let's say uh, culture and marketing, creating Carta, uh, which is a cultural marketing and a creative agency, using uh, culture as a key business driver. So today, uh, if we speak about marketing, so we know that marketing is often defined as the action or or the business of promoting and selling products, services, including uh, market research and advertising. It's also the, the process or technique of promoting, selling and distributing uh, a product or service. So, I mean, when you read that, you said, okay, product, service, I'm doing art, I'm doing creativity, am I concerned? So uh, you have, let's say, the, the guru of marketing, like uh, Philippe Kotler, um, who define marketing as being the science and art of exploring, creating, and delivering value uh, to an unfulfilled needs and desires. So, I mean, that's very interesting because, I mean, when you're talking about marketing, you, you're talking about creating um, unfulfilled needs. From, like, let's say, uh, 
for consumers, but also let's say you have to think in a prospective way, which is like, okay, how am I going to um, think about what consumers might need in the future? So very often we oppose marketing and culture. And I know that if there is, if they are like, let's say creatives and an artist in, in the audience, uh, they might tell me that, yeah, normally we don't want our work to be linked to um, marketing. Uh, quite often we will use communication, which is very different as, um, as a, let's say, as a, as a job, but marketing is very often rejected. What was marketing is very well perceived as was saying as mass industrialized, but was culture is let's say in a, in a posh perception uh, on an elitist one perceived that for very few individual and has to be kept authentic. So that's very interesting because I mean, these two uh, notions are not opposed. Huh? They, they, they are actually complementary and they do complete themselves. So there is first of all, different kinds of cultures. I mean, culture is not meant to stay only in art galleries or in museums or in art center, uh, there is like the popular uh, culture, uh, there is classic culture. So, I mean, we also have to think about that. And culture is also something which is not dead. That's something which is uh, ongoing. That's the same thing for art. And, uh, and marketing is not an homogeneous practice. I mean, so both of them share uh, common, um, common, uh, common elements. So the taboo, the taboo I was mentioning is that very often uh, when we speak about El Beza, Tal Flus, <laughs> we have uh, the money, we have uh, artists feeling a bit uncomfortable, uh, people telling that they're not doing that for the money, people saying that um, they're feeling kind of shameful to discuss money, which let's be honest, I mean, there's no problem about not feeling at comfortable about talking about money. I mean, that, I mean that, that can happen, but it shouldn't be. That's why there is there are agents like artist agents. It's why there are like art galleries because I mean everybody um, has his or her own uh, specificity or let's say a specialty. I would say, but the problem is more on the perception, and this is what I want to tackle now. Is that Let's be honest, art is also an economic activity. I mean, artists need to get values and pay to ensure, uh, first of all, the living. Uh, not every artist uh, has uh, a day job. Not every artist uh, has, let's say, rich parents. Not every artist uh, has uh, a rich partner or even not rich, like someone who can uh, support them. So you really have to think about your art practice as something which needs to be, um, before talking about respect, I want to say uh, valued. And, and, and that's key and that's a topic that we'll, uh, we'll tackle later with, uh, with Hessa about that. First of all, I mean, you know that creative economy um, is in some countries, I mean, I will speak about France, for example, a country I know very well because I'm I'm French Algerian and um, creative economy in France is as big as um, the auto sector, like, you know, car, like car manufacturing, automobile sector. And we know that France is very big when it comes to, to, car, to cars. So it's around uh, five to 7% of the, of, the, of the country uh, GDP. And creative economy is, is, is key because especially now when we are talking about artificial intelligence, creative economy is a strong point of difference. So when I'm talking about creative economy, I'm talking about uh, all knowledge-based economic activities um, upon which the creative industries are based. So I mean, it goes from advertising, architecture, art and craft, uh, design, fashion, film, video, photography, music, performing arts, TV, radio, um, all that. And, um, and all this sector, all this economic sector is an important source of commercial and cultural value. So Sofian, uh, since we're, we're still talking about the commercialism and the marketing, I wanted to ask, do you still need to market your work even if you're not producing commercially? Yes, 
I mean, that's um, okay. that's a question which I mean is is worth uh, being shared actually with the with the audience because even though your work, even though the purpose of your work is not to be sold commercially, your work still has a value. So what do I mean by value? I mean, I was especially focused on, on, uh, on monetary, on financial value, you know, before, but at the end, even though you're not selling your artwork, you're still having a value being, let's say, um, selected in a creation program, uh, being selected in, uh, in a special exhibition, um, and even though you're not getting it to value, people will. Because people will like to possess or to experiment what you're doing. And you always have to think about, okay. Uh, for example, in the UAE, we're quite uh, lucky because, I mean, very often, a lot of the, um, of the shows or exhibitions are free, like the entrances are free. But in other countries, uh, you have to pay for a ticket. So to some extent, even though you're participating has that to a show and you're not selling your piece, your, the fact that you've been selected to be part of his exhibition, at the end, bottom line, you have to think that somebody who is paying 10 euros to check the exhibition will actually, will give a value actually. At the end, they will say, yeah, it's worth it. It was great. And, and sorry, I'm not resuming, like I'm not... So, uh, summarizing all what we're doing as art is just at, at the price of a ticket. But that's something that we need to keep in mind also. Yeah, that definitely puts the art as an economic practice into more context, I think. Which is normal, uh, again, because, I mean, you have to think about uh, creativity, about art and culture as being uh, an economical sector. Mm -hmm. So we don't want people to go to exhibition just because it's nice. Yeah, for sure it's nice. And that's the first thing. But we want uh, when governments, when authorities are building, let's say, museums or building uh, or, or let's say um, developing um, uh, arts, um, art foundation, I mean, foundations are not linked to government or to authorities. But um, we, we, we're not looking for charity, we're looking, for, uh, we're looking to be uh, something which can be, to some extent, uh, self, um, um, let's say self, uh, not profitable, I don't like to use this word, but like uh, self-sufficient, even though that, I mean, I do believe that authorities need, um, need to invest in culture. Yeah. Um, so when we're talking about cultural marketing, something which is key that, I mean, that's a type of marketing using and adapting general principles of marketing to art and cultures and uh, acknowledging specificities. So first, we're not in the principle of only answering to a demand because the artist vision should always be more important than the demand. I'm going to give you a, a very, like a great example. It's fashion. Uh, very often, you have different kind of designers, you have very prospective uh, fashion designers, let's say very avant-garde, and you have commercial fashion. So we can see that the, in both sides, the artist vision is, um, is what is going to influence what people are going to wear later. Um, when it comes to art and culture, you have different life cycle. Um, we should focus on the fact of respecting the unique creation and it's also very often a symbol. So something which is key always is for artists and creative uh, being here today is always to think what is your market? And uh, that's a bit linked to the question that you asked me before, even though uh, your, your work is not, or even though um, you are not commercially thinking about your work, you still have to think about market. Like the market can be okay if people are going to buy your piece or, or if people are going to visit your exhibition or your show. Because to some extent, it, it's, it's all linked. Um, so you have to think, are you doing something for galleries, for museum? Is it going to be a contemporary art? Is it going to be video installation? For example, I'm just thinking, or more illustration. Is it going to be installation or more modern art? Are you targeting more, let's say, the Middle East, North Africa, calling it Arab world or more Southeast Asia? 
Uh, are you more going to go through uh, photography? Um, all these are questions that you need to ask because even though you don't want to, um, let's say, to, to lock yourself in boxes, and I didn't propose to have boxes here to show that actually um, that's something that you need to go out of it because you're not part of these boxes. I mean, that's very important. But you need to know where you are, like, where are you going to pick your audience? Um, so uh, as an artist, you have a unique perspective and you need to define your own identity. So, I mean, you, you, to some extent, you are a brand and that's very important. So, I mean, the brand DNA uh, will be the series of characteristics which uh, make you and your work different and recognizable. So uh, that's what I was saying last time, saying uh, this is what people say about you when you're, when you're not there, when you're not in the room. Uh, we're not talking about gossiping here. We're just talking about how you can quickly recognize uh, the signature or the style of, um, of an artist. So here, for example, you know, uh, I mean, in, um, in, when you go to, um, to Palestine, you have the, the famous, uh, sadly famous uh, wall. And uh, you will always recognize amongst a lot of graffiti, you will always recognize, for example, Banksy because he has a specific style. Same thing when it comes to graffiti. You will, you have several graffiti, calligraphy artists, but you can quickly uh, recognize Elsid because I mean, he's been uh, focusing on, on colors and a special style, specific, uh, let's say, um, calligraphy style, which uh, makes him very strongly recognizable. Um, same thing here, uh, you have uh, two different artists, which uh, I don't know if you know them or not, but like they are very recognizable. So you have the Algerian Baya on the, um, on the left and you have uh, Haiv uh, Kahraman on the, on the, left, on the right side. So um, once you not your acknowledge, but once you're, you're taking, like you're realizing that you're a brand and you know how to define it. I know that it was, uh, it, it, it was the subject, the topic of, uh, of another session. So I'm not going to dig more into that. Um, you need to know exactly uh, what will be your content strategy. So first of all, what is content strategy? So content marketing is, uh, because yeah, even content strategy, it's marketing. I mean, even though there is not the word marketing in it, it's marketing. And it's a, it's a strategy marketing approach uh, focused on creating and distributing uh, valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain uh, a clearly defined audience. So here, I mean, you understand why I was talking about how to define the audience. It's key. And ultimately, uh, to drive profitable customer action. Uh, content is an asset for you and it's a way to communicate without being intrusive or bothering. Um, so how do you define if you are being intrusive or bothering? It's also how you are linked to your, to your own audience. Yeah. So Safian, obviously with the content, you really want to accentuate what you just said, you know, your artist signature. Uh, but there are some artists who have different areas of focus, so they, they do more than one thing. So is it a good idea to separate kind of these different paths into, for example, different social media accounts or um, just, so, for example, just as you did with the Confused Arab and Karta, you know, there's two completely separate things. Or can it sometimes like at some point become too much for your audience? to have yourself so fragmented in that, in that way. I mean, that's, uh, that's something that you, you definitely have to, to ask yourself. Because I mean, yeah, at the end, I mean, the purpose is not to communicate, to have, let's say, um, a schizophrenic communication. I mean, you mm. need to uh, be very authentic. And I started saying that, being authentic in, in what you're doing. I know that it can sound as, um, as an empty, like let's say as an empty word, but what do I mean by that? If you take my example, for example, uh, if you take my example, so the Confused Arab uh, is, let's say a very personal uh, platform, uh, 
targeting uh, not only, but many, let's say, Arabs or people with an interest in the Arab world. So first of all, I'm targeting people who do believe that we are sharing elements. If you do consider yourself as an Arab, it means that you're part of, let's say, of this, of this community. And uh, I'm also using it as a diary, you know, just to document things, which I will later on um, dig further during my art, during my, uh, art installation. So because even when you look through, uh, through the computer, app, for example, a lot of people don't know that I'm doing art. So, I mean, that's also a, that's also a point here. Yeah, I mean, you're right. When it comes to Carta, because I mean, it's more a professional tool and that's a marketing agency. I, I don't think that the people who are interested in the content that I'm delivering on the Confused app, which is mainly cultural self-questioning and identity, will be interested into another kind of identity, but like a commercial one. Because with Carta, I'm helping, let's say, brands to define um, new territories or to explore uh, new markets. Uh, even though both projects are very, let's say, uh, um, linked and uh, they can definitely live like together, I think that they both need to, um, they, they, they need to have uh, different faces. Yeah. And that, I mean, when I'm saying faces, I mean that uh, different expressions. And there's another thing also, Hassa, um, uh, which is key. It depends also who is on board with you. Because for example, on Qatar, I'm not alone. So mm -hmm. even though uh, a lot of people will tell me, oh, okay, we know you through the Confused Arab. Yeah, Confused Arab is me. I mean, it's me or it's you, like the community sharing common things. Carta is me and the people working with me on Carta, um, talking to brands, to consumers, but through brands. So that's different. Yeah, that definitely makes sense when you talk in terms of the audience and what they're interested in seeing. Yeah, thank yes. you. Um, in terms of communication, also you need to have a communication strategy. And as you were saying, the audience is key. When I was saying that, who are you talking to, sorry. And then after the key thing is like, why? I mean, why are you talking? Why do you think that you need to, to do what you're doing? To, I mean, the first question, why are you talking, will be, uh, let's say, will echo the why are you doing this art practice? So if I ask you, for example, uh, Hessa, why are you doing this specific kind of pottery? Is that a real, a real question? Yes. So I do it because of research, because of my thirst to learn more okay about the subject that i'm researching so that's great because then after the fact that you're talking about the research it means that and that's something also you do instead of focusing just on the end result you're taking your audience or you're taking people through all this research process to build this piece mm. so this is the yeah this exactly. is the why the research is the why and you need also to know something uh, that no communication is a form of communication. If you're not talking, if you're not like sharing things about yourself, it's a choice. That's very interesting, actually. Very, very interesting in this day and age with, you know, everything being on social media. Yeah. No, no, I mean, that, that's important. You just need to be aware of, of that. And I mean, that's completely respectable. That's a strategy. Even though you're not mm. thinking as if as it as a strategy, it's a strategy. Maybe an unwanted or an unwanted one, but that's a strategy. So we saw um, why, like we more or less uh, tackled, tackled why uh, why we are communicating. So let's come back more in detail to who you are communicating. So when you're an artist, um, we mentioned the audience. Uh, is your audience local, international? What is its age group? the gender, the interest. Are you talking to, institution, to institutions? Uh, are these institutions being local, international, public or private? Uh, are you talking to media? Are they local, international um, uh, media? Uh, are you talking to galleries? Uh, are they local or international? So, I mean, that's, uh, that's very important. Same for collectors. 
And in addition um, to the fact that in our region, I mean, um, mainly we have the question of language, which is key. Um, I, I'm, for example, now we don't know, I mean, I don't know exactly who is the audience, so it's why I'm speaking in English, even though I would love to speak and mix with Arabic, but because I don't know who is the audience, I'll have to adapt. But for the people who are familiar with my, my platform, you know that I always like code mix or like uh, switch languages. So what do you want to communicate? So first of all, um, don't assume. Uh, you need to learn to focus on the brand you. So sharing your inspiration, your research, uh, what's happening now. But more than what's only happening now, what is your vision on what's happening now? And uh, you need also to share everything which will strengthen your credibility and image. Uh, so Hessa, for example, what kind of music do you like to listen when you're, you're producing a piece? Heavy metal. <laughs> hmm? Heavy metal. Heavy metal? So, I mean, that's, that's great. But you it's not what I show publicly, though. It's what I personally like. You know, like that would create like an additional <laughs> layer to, uh, to the character. <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess it also makes me think about like what my audience wants to listen to and what they think is most suitable for, for the stuff that I'm producing, right? <laughs> but yeah, that's great. <laughs> so when to communicate, so uh, you always have to be authentic and relevant. So to determine, to determine uh, key moments linked to art. So are you going to communicate just before uh, art fair shows? Or are you going to communicate uh, when there is a specific uh, event happening linked to a theme that you're inspired by? And uh, keep strongly alive the relation that you have a community and engage with them on a regular basis. Uh, so, I mean, you don't have to disappear from, I mean, if you think that you can disappear, I mean, or if you want to disappear, sorry, that's, uh, that would be better. Uh, you can, but like, think as if it was like a conversation with friends. And if you don't update your friends on what you're doing, it becomes very commercial then because I mean, you're just seeing them to show them, yeah, this is what I did, like it, you want to buy it, yeah, okay. No, you have to take them through all the process. So where to communicate? I mean, that's a question which comes very often. And the first question is like, hi, how are you? What's your name? Okay, what's your Instagram? So, um, that, that was at least like uh, at the time when we used to be uh, having social, direct social interaction. Now, very often, we, we tend to interact with people through the social media before meeting people in person. I mean, that, do, that, that does happen to me very often. People know the profile before meeting me. Uh, try to be digital, so physical and digital. I mean, don't put everything just on digital. I mean, you have also... Uh, respecting social distanciation, but like being physical. Um, use digital platforms and social media and create or participate to social interactions. So where to communicate? Um, there is, um, and I'm going to go very quickly because I mean, we have more things later. You have, let's say some social media where, which are more linked to emotions, some to rational or they used to be rational let's say i mean i don't believe that anymore um but it's always about how to use the social media to co communicate these questions who are you what are you what about you and what about you and me i mean the resonance creating this relationship is very important uh where to communicate when i was talking about physical uh, or digital i mean you need to build also your own community with people with your peers and with people who share like the same interest. So identify galleries, institutions, uh, personalities with who you share common elements, inspiration and values, contact them, uh, meet them. So if you like an art gallery and you want to know exactly what's happening, um, send them an email. I mean, okay, they will, they will include you to their mailing list, but maybe you can ask to meet the curating team. Uh, I mean, just interact with them. 
I mean, you, you will be surprised how people are open. And um, yes, I was also talking about when you come back to the who are you communicating with, um, that's linked to the question you were uh, you asked me before, uh, Hessa. I would I would suggest one social media pair target, a specific language, authentic to be used, and cultural codes to be shared with the community. I mean, it can be humor, it can be references. In my case, for example, because I have different kinds of identities. I know that sometimes if I'm sharing very French Arab content, um, some people of the Middle East are not going to understand. And same thing if I'm, let's say, tripping on, um, on very old Khaliji songs, I know that I will lose uh, some of my uh, uh, diaspora audience, but I'm still doing that authentically and I'm explaining it. Yes. Yeah, it can definitely have different tones when you're talking about completely different things with different audiences. Yeah. And then after, you know, it's becoming very funny because sometimes you share things and people don't perceive the same, the, the same, yeah. uh, the same content. <laughs> and that's, that's what I love because I mean, you're just putting hints here and there and you have people getting back to you and asking you, was it what you meant? And you're like, <laughs> Um, how to communicate on Instagram. I will focus mainly on Instagram because we know that Instagram is, I mean, is a big, um, is a, is a big uh, social media. So I'm going to share um, elements from my account just for you to, to, have, uh, to have an idea. So first of all, you know that on Instagram, you have KPIs. Uh, I don't like to use the word performance because I mean, it's not just about performance, but you need to know why are you on social media? Are you there to connect with other artists? Are you there to increase your visibility? Are you there to get inspired? And that's a question actually you should always think about. For example, now we know that a lot of people are downloading Clubhouse and people are like, yeah, Clubhouse is cool. I'm not looking for coolness. I'm looking for something. What does that mean for me? So, uh, and, and, and that's why actually social media can be addictive sometimes because once you find the, the reason why you are using them, you're kind of hook. You need to think about, yes. Yeah, sorry. I guess also the biggest question can also be, especially because with social media, you know, we get so addicted to numbers to likes and followers and engagement levels. So I guess the main question here is that you know, you need to really know why you want to grow that platform. You know, why do you need more followers? Why do you need more likes? Is there a specific reason? Now, that's the thing. I mean, you don't have to be addicted to this dopamine effect of having the likes of having. Um, so that's why you always have to. I mean, that's something we'll, we'll get into it later. But when I was talking about authenticity, you need to do things which are linked to you and to your inspiration. I know that it can be a trap because then after, I mean, willingly you would be like, no, I'm not inspired by what I'm saying. But just things which are similar, at the end, uh, you're kind of trapped. So I don't know if you remember one of the first slides I put about cultural marketing, saying that when it comes to cultural marketing, one of the key points is that the vision of the artist should be uh, superior, like, uh, more important than the demand. Yes. So, um, but then so that's, sometimes, uh, you know, regarding that, when there is a conflict between your own vision versus the demand of your audience, you know, what they want to see, what they engage more with, you can sometimes feel trapped to create that same kind of content that you know that would please your audience. But, and you, you, you feel it's hard to explore and share new and different things. I had a mishklin, you know why? Because I mean, very often uh, you as an artist, you will communicate on things and you will think that people are perceiving that. And people might perceive something completely different. But don't forget why you are sharing that. You're sharing that for something. So I mean, sometimes it's good just like to recenter things. But we'll speak about that yeah, later. 
Uh, you need to, to check uh, if you want more to communicate on posts or stories, hashtag, no hashtag. And as I was telling you, be relevant and authentic, stick to your brand. And if you listen to people, people like, and then uh, I'm one, I mean, people like, is a very general word. Uh, I'm the people, you are the people, but like, we, we like something at one moment, but then after our attention span can change very quickly, our interest can change very quickly. And then after you have artists saying, yeah, but I don't understand things were working. Photographers, for example, my style was working so well before and I don't understand. Yeah, because you need to be self-critic also with yourself. Um, for example, here, uh, when I was talking about being consistent, uh, you know, like this is some of exa example of my content for the people who don't know. Uh, even though I'm sharing very different things, it's very often, I mean, it's always related to my personality and to, let's say, uh, this idea of diary, questioning myself and questioning people about identity and, um, and about also self-nostalgia. Um, for the one who are not yet on business accounts, I would advise you to go on business accounts uh that's very easy you just have to set a professional account on instagram because i mean that will open you um a new kind of um of analytics that we are going to go through later so uh, even though when you're opening an instagram page, uh, account or any or any other um, social media you have to think about which username to take which picture is it your is it your art um, you need to link it to your website. You need to think about the bio that you are going to have. Um, and then after that, that was like the figures and what I was thinking about. You know, sometimes you, you all know this, like this uh, tag, um, tag tap, where you can, uh, you can see on which kind of pictures you've been tagged. So, I mean, I invite you to check it because, I mean, it's quite interesting to see on what people are associate, associating you. And uh, that's funny. Sometimes you can be tagged on a lot of things and then after less, be selective also. You don't want to be tagged on anything because, again, you're not looking just for attention. You're looking for being authentic in what you're doing. Yeah, it can be embarrassing as well sometimes. <laughs> yes. And... Um, for the one also being on business account, you can check the you can check the the share. It's very interesting to see like what kind of content yeah you, the, the people are sharing or liking. Uh, you can check also who is your community on Instagram. So uh, in my case, for example, it's very funny because I don't have uh, a lot of people in the same place because I'm talking to the same kind of people, the diaspora Arabs, all of the. Um, the world. So, I mean, if you look, I'm in a lot of, let's say, cities, but not in a big one. Uh, age range, alhamdulillah, I'm still uh, targeting like younger people. <laughs> and uh, men and women, I mean, that's also, that's also quite interesting to get like gender, an idea of gender. Uh, when it comes also to engage on Instagram, you also have to to get into conversation. And um, that's what we were mentioning before, uh, Hessa, how to be ready to share what you want without being a victim or trapped by the community. So once, for example, uh, I went to Europe, I went to uh, Rotterdam and I shared like uh, some content on the city and actually it was diaspora content and uh, the city of Rotterdam and the fact that uh, it's, uh, it's a city with uh, mainly foreigners living there. And I got like, yeah, some people telling me this is the whitest story I haven't seen. Another one telling me this is the confused Arab, not the confused Dutch. And, and that was very interesting because then after I opened a conversation on that. I mean, you know, like I was not saying, oh, okay, khalas. People are not looking for that. I'm not going to share that. No, I did that because for me, again, I'm using, uh, I'm using this as a diary. So for me, it was important to document it. So you're creating content based on that kind of engagement. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
another, I mean, uh, we can finish by that and then after uh, op we'll be open to questions is partnering with brands. Mm -hmm. So um, that's very interesting for me because I've been as, uh, as the confused Arab or as an artist or as let's say uh, a cultural uh, actor in the UAE and the world, I'm often approached by brands to, um, to partner with them on some projects. And, uh, and I learned a lot of things about that. And also as Carta, like as the, this uh, cultural marketing agency, uh, we are mainly focused on creating um, cultural content or cultural partnerships with luxury brands and artists. But we're always trying to do it like our way which is like respecting what artists uh, are. And that's very important just to, to show you what we meant. So examples of partnerships. So, I mean, we, we for example, we, we worked on, a, we developed a full uh, Ramadan campaign uh, illustrated by Tulip Hasbar. And as, for the people who are like familiar with the work of uh, the talented uh, Tulip, uh, the work is completely in line with what she's doing. Uh, we worked on, with her like on, uh, on the direction and we worked uh, hand by hand and, uh, and that was actually the result was very, I mean, we are very happy of it. Another kind of project was with Jotun, uh, who, uh, Jotun the Paint, who uh, really uh, trusted us also just to build uh, a full uh, campaign, 360 campaign on uh, searching colors of the Arabs. So uh, I was approached actually to be part of the, of the cast, which I accepted. And at the same time, I was like, yeah, but you know, I think that the campaign could take this direction. And at the same time, actually, Carta, Carta my agency, uh, took care of the, the, the full concept, uh, working with the artists and, um, and, other, and other creatives. So here we had, for example, Noha Zayed in Egypt or Mu'adh al Alfi in, uh, in Saudi and, and, and we delivered something very beautiful and very in line with what artists uh, are looking for. So I'll end up by that, uh, the partnership triangle. My favorite. Uh, <laughs> yes, and I just figured out that I forgot um, something. <laughs> and the triangle, like this partnership uh, triangle is key and i'm happy that it's your that it's your favorite because for all of you i really want you to uh keep it in mind so i mean it's not yellow because it's gold i mean we're not gold diggers but we are looking for something called value uh, value and respect so every time you get a project you have to check uh, this triangle and questioning and, and, and questioning yourself on that is the project getting you pleasure? Is this project getting you money? Is it getting you visibility? So then go for it. It's nice. Is it just pleasure and money? Uh, do you want to be the invisible woman or the invisible man? That's not something I like, you know, let's say developing content or developing, uh, let's say, I don't know, something without being mentioned. Mm. Uh, that's not something neither I would recommend. Is it just ple pleasure and visibility? So here I'm asking you the question, who are you? <laughs> and we'll go maybe later on to that. Is it money and visibility? So then after you have to think, where's the trap? Because if you don't get pleasure doing it, Okay, it's well paid, you have visibility, but why you are not getting pleasure doing it? Is it because it's taking you too far from what you are and what you are doing? Mm -hmm. Or is it just because, I mean, sometimes as art, I mean, sometimes you can be very busy, you have other things on your plate and you have, let's say, a show to prepare and you don't have time for that. But that's more or less something acceptable, I mean, to have money and visibility. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because I'm mean, pleasure, you, I mean, pleasure needs to, I mean, it's something that you need to have for sure. That's, uh, and if they are all only uh, offering you visibility, uh, that's for me uh, a prof, like a deep lack of respect. Of and the taboo word exposure, you know, 
tempting yeah. artists as baits, like with exposure, you know, yeah. artists and are you, not falling for that. And you, know, and you know what we say quite often, like, yeah, visibility doesn't pay the bills. So <laughs> exactly. exactly. So in that case, like we really think visibility in terms of, you know, if, if it's social media, you know, visibility is going to get you followers and likes. Why do I need that? You know, in this. No, no. And and I really want you know, I uh, Hessa, I really want to speak about that, uh, both for artists and brands. I mean, first of all, when you're a brand a manager, or when like you you're working for a brand, uh, that's very disrespectful. Just to ask somebody to work for free. Yeah. Uh, you're you're being paid doing what you're doing. You're selling a product which is going to mm. uh, get uh, sold. So I mean, please don't do that. Yeah. And also when it comes to artists, it's why I was talking about the pleasure. Uh, challenge yourself also, because I mean, sometimes also, uh, I know that some artists can be a bit, uh, let's say, very far from um, economic reality. Yeah. And uh, as soon as you agree on a project, you need to be committed because people are counting on you. Uh, let's say if you, if you accept to be on a shoot or to work on an exhibition, uh, let's say that you're not the only one. Mm. I'm not just talking about the brand because sometimes you can say, yeah, but the brand, if we cancel, uh, they find a plan B. No, I mean, sorry. There is a photographer who was booked maybe to work with you. Exactly. There was a copywriter. There is that. So, I mean, just think also, uh, I don't want to uh, blame anyone, but mm. always think about, yeah, all the people uh, in the picture. Yeah, so actually, I remember we talked about that and I was also in a situation where I collaborated with a very, very big brand um, telling me that, you know, they haven't allocated a budget to work with an artist, yet they want to work with an artist and they've hired this production crew and, you know, all these people. So technically, there is a budget for that. And all you need to do is just ask, just ask for what's right for you. You know, you put the conditions as well. Um, so, Safiana, I also wanted to bring up the subject of, you know, during quarantine last year, during the COVID situation, there was a very, very uh, high demand for artist-led uh, content. So, things like online tutorials and workshops and videos. So, is it right to accept everything that comes to your way or do you need to be selective about that? I guess also the, the triangle makes a lot more sense here no for sure you have to be selective even with institutions i mean because i mean mm -hmm. at the end institutions are also um working uh with budgets and um that's a choice i mean it's exactly what you said what we're discussing that's a choice you are choosing to contact me to tell me that you don't have budget mm. so imagine that if their their bosses or like i don't know their boss is like their boss are looking at them and they're telling you i'm choosing not to pay you today okay you came to the office this week but i'm choosing not to pay you today so i mean this i mean you really have to be careful about that i mean that's um yeah that's something you you, you spoke about like a yeah, choice but there's something else which is also be, being careful to not to create a precedent um a lot of artists and especially in our region unfortunately do uh work for free they do accept to uh, do things for visibility because some of them are still living at their parents or some of them are having a day job and they're looking for visibility. Mm -hmm. uh, just please keep in mind that you're creating a precedent uh, for the creative community because then after you're entitling people to think that artists uh, actually are just rich kids or rich kids or they don't need to work, uh, one, and second wise, uh, you're creating a precedent against yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's something, uh, we're not talking about millions. Huh? Uh, mm. It's very often it's linked to the intention, you know? It's basically so, how others are gonna look so, at artists. So you're affecting the whole industry basically. Exactly, yeah. because you know, as soon, and, and they're very, I mean, they, they, they're very like, let's say cunning very often because they don't give you an amount. They don't tell you, hi, sorry, I just have 2000 dirhams if you, because they say, no, but if we give a budget, we might insult him or her. Mm -hmm. No, I prefer that you give me a budget, that you give me an amount, even though it's low. At least I know that you are working in this ballpark and you, you are locating a budget. Mm -hmm. But telling me that I have no budget, it's insulting. Yeah. 
And that's why I mean I think to value your work, your time, your yes. efforts. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Sufyan, so we talked about the things that you need to get paid for, which are you know the, the major collaborations, your work, the things that you put a lot of time and effort into. But there are some situations where you can accept doing work without payment, correct? Uh, are there for, any situations for, like that? For me, it depends. If, for example, if it's related to a charity, if, it, if it's rela related to, uh, yeah, I mean, charity or let's say a uh, learning program, you know, just to, to, to help people like this, mm -hmm. okay, I agree. But okay. uh, even though that, for example, I want to mention that uh, all the tutors in FOSA have been paid, you know, nobody contacted us telling us, hi, oh, yeah, can you please do it for free? No, I mean, that's very important. That's valuable and that's something which needs to be shared. We are paying our uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, but that's, that's good. I mean, that's... Yeah. Uh, uh and uh yeah i think that it's just a mindset and a mindset that we need to to change in the region yeah so sofian we have a few questions from the audiences yes. uh, so someone asked uh, do you ever approach brands and what's the best practices here so like what what how do you establish those collaborations do you wait for the brands to, to approach you or? Is no, there no, 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 we do like actually, uh, are they asking like me as an artist or me as Carta? I think it might be more relevant to speak in terms of artists. Yeah. So um, I think that uh, one of the key things is that um, it depends on the relationship that you have with brands. Because for example, if you've been, um, if you've been very attracted or inspired, I would say more by a brand, uh, you can think about a partnership and then after try to contact them and try to contact the, the marketing team and or communication team to see exactly if they can work together with you. Um, but you, you have to be prepared for that. So it's why I was asking you if you're more asking me like in terms of, uh, of, of artist or agency because uh, uh, sometimes, I mean, let's say that's, so that's what I was saying before, when you have agents or when you have uh, people who know how to do that, sometimes, I mean, they know how to negotiate. Yeah. But you also have to be careful because sometimes you have um, kind of uh, crook agencies, people um, mm -hmm. uh, taking out of the budget of the artist, let's say, their fees, yeah. which I mean, shouldn't be the case. But then I also want to mention something very important here is that you know, you need to kind of identify who you want to be in that terms. Like, are you still the artist? Are you promoting something? Are you providing a service? You know, just kind of be very clear about that because it can really affect the way that you present the work as well, right? Yes. Or the way that you get paid as well. Exactly. And, and actually, I mean, uh, I know that, for example, uh, by experience, you know, every time we work, let's say, on, on, on video content or, or a project with artists we like when an artist i mean and even myself as an artist that's what i was doing with uh, with brands just to bring an input you're not just a model you're someone actually you, you need to say yeah i think i would be interested to do this i could do mm -hmm. that okay so i mean that's that's quite important and great to be part of the of the general conversation yeah um so we have another question saying what does it mean to underexpose or overexpose your practice when it comes to social media presence? Yes. So um, if we speak about the opposition be between underexposed or overexposed, uh, that's what we said before. It's all about, uh, I mean, at the end, it's a choice. Uh, because, I mean, the, expo the exposure is linked to a certain target. So, um, if you think, because sometimes we can think that we are doing a bit too much, that we are all over the place, always think about, is it relevant, is the content I'm sharing, is it relevant with who I am or with my practice? Uh, so, I mean, this, this is quite key. And sometimes you have, let's say, moments where you will be overexposed mm -hmm. and moments where you will be underexposed, but you always have to be relevant and to be in the moment. Mm. Yeah. So another question is, what are the ways to find out what the payment terms should be in a partnership or a collaboration? 
um, is there a way to check industry standards? And I think, um, you know, this is something a lot of people get nervous about, especially when collaborating with completely new industries. They know very little about, you know, the money that goes with it, because again, it's taboo to talk about it. So is there a way to, to learn about it that? Sh it shouldn't be. I mean, you just have to ask the question. And very often, I mean, generally, I mean, it depends on, uh, first of all, your economic situation. I mean, because companies at the end, you know, when they're dealing, they're dealing between like 30 and 60 days, uh, maximum, I think, uh, 90 days. But that's part of a contract. Mm -hmm. If you say, sorry, yeah, I want to be paid, let's say, 50% advance, and I want to have the less, I mean, there's nothing, yeah, there's nothing, uh, I mean, you, you are putting the, the taboo where there's no taboo. Yeah. So is it okay, to, for example, to go about asking friends who have previously worked with them or? I think so, yes, no, for because, sure. Because, you know, it's a bit, um, no. yeah. No, no, I think not, no, I mean, that's, <laughs> actually that's healthy, you know what? Because if, you, if you're not, if you don't know everything, you know what happens, you're starting to be defensive. Mm. And then when starting to be defensive because you don't know. So you have to ask. And then after, if the person in front of you is the one becoming defensive, it means that there's something wrong. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone else has any other question. Okay, so. Is it okay to share work in progress and process? before the final artwork is officially released or it's always a better idea to share after, for example, artwork is showcased in a, in a, in a show. So I think probably you mean in terms of collaboration, right? It's not your own work, your own personal work. Oh, I think it can be both. I think if it's collaboration for sure, because I mean, I mean, you need to agree, and that's why actually I always uh, yeah. encourage every artist to ask for a 50% advance payment when it comes to, uh, let's say, uh, brand curated project, mm -hmm. because uh, you don't want to find yourself in the situation where the brand is saying, you know, that's not at all what we are looking for. Um, I mean, you need to agree and to be very transparent when it's, uh, let's say, an, uh, a, commi a commission piece. And that this is very, very important because the commission piece at the end is something which has been required by someone. Might yeah. be a brand, might be someone. So, I mean, you need to, to check with the person for sure. Yeah. So, some collaborators will actually make it a term in the contract to, you know, keep this quiet until it's officially released. And some, yeah. some collaborators yeah. might actually enjoy that, you know, teaser process. Exactly. Then after it depends if it's a teaser, it depends if, uh, I mean, and it depends also of your character, you know, me, for example, Bakrashi, I hate the something is cooking, you know, like there's something is cooking. I hate that personally, but I will, I will share teasing, teasing elements. But I think that this question actually can go uh, for commercial and non-commercial uh, uh, partnerships, you know, like, for example, if you're part of a creating of, of uh, I don't know, of a show and, uh, uh, I think at the end, you have to keep the, the reveal of the show. Yeah. So uh, you, you want to keep the emotion. So no, yeah, you don't have to show everything. But as we mentioned before, you can show them, we can share the music which has inspired you. You can share, let's say, the, 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 all the research part, mm. which yeah. will make people being interested into that. Mm. I think in any case, you should definitely, definitely, definitely iron out all the terms so that there aren't any misunderstandings. And it would be preferable if things were kind of written out, whether it's an email or a contract. Don't rely on something that's verbal because, you know, no, never. You change. Um, so, yeah, I think the way to go with it is probably, you know, a, an agreement. An agreement is always something that's good. So, yeah, I think we're out of time, Sofian. Um, so thank you so much, so much for this amazing session. We learned so much with, with you about, you know, how to have your own brand, public brand as an artist and how to maintain your social media in that way and how to also collaborate with different brands and entities through that platform. Um, yeah, and, and I just wanted to add that this session uh, will be 
recorded and uploaded uh, onto our website very soon. So you may always, um, you know, rewatch it later on. So thank you all for joining and thank you, Safian. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good night. Thank you.